Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel. And it's an exciting day today because Jenny, uh, my middle daughter, she's getting married this week. And so that's a really exciting. And we're actually gonna do a little bit of a harvest for that wedding um, feast today. And the second reason is that this week and today probably actually, we're finished planting for winter and spring. And that is quite a milestone. There's not many times really in the way that I garden that every square inch of the plot is planted up. It kind of happens in May time and it happens now. And it's fantastic because once everything's planted, you know, the only, you know, only additional planting that we'll be doing is when we're kind of clearing beds uh, because we've harvested them. So for example, we'll soon be harvesting all the radicchio and so then we'll replant that bed. But it's a very slow, process now over winter uh, and into early spring because as I say we're only planting what we're you know, beds that we're clearing um, and we, we won't be clearing very much because most stuff is cut and come again from now on so um, yeah it's lovely so it just marks a lovely sort of relaxing phase of allotment life where it's all about harvesting and very little else to do just all those kind of clear up jobs that you don't want to really do over autumn and, and summer. So uh, yeah, I'm going to show you around um, the plot and I'll show you what we're harvesting. I'll show you the end result of the harvest and then we'll be done. So we'll start with the polytunnel and growth is still going pretty well in the polytunnel at the moment. Uh, outside growth is pretty much slowed, um, which is not such a bad thing because we've got plenty in the ground, but Anyway, I'll show you what I've got in here. So I've got some uh, Ford Hook chard. Got a few spare little brassica plants. Tub of winter carrots. Obviously no sign of those yet. Rocket mixed brassicas with quite a few interplanted radishes in there. More mixed brassicas down here. More rocket. Roxy salad. Uh, Roxy lettuce rather, um, bijou lettuce and freckles lettuce and then just along this bench got all my spare lettuces and these are my brassicas for overwintering, a few spare beetroot, a few more lettuces those will be planted out obviously later on in the year probably December time by now um, and obviously they won't be ready until early spring spring onions for spring more lettuces so that's there on the bench just got a few chilies still ripening off trying to keep those frost free baby carrots for the wedding just potted on a few spare lettuces here and then more brassicas for overwintering. More brassicas overwintering again, all these for spring. Um, and these are my more spare lettuces. So I've basically got six spare lettuces of each of the main varieties that I grow over winter. And so if I get any losses, I can just pop these in. Uh, and they'll last for ages in these uh, big in these big trays. And then I've got some beetroot. I'm overwintering beetroot this year. It's a first for me. Um, we'll see how it goes. I've got some outside already, and they're growing quite strongly. I'm not sure, you know, whether they'll work, but who cares? It's got a little bit of space, so time to experiment. And then Grenoble Red, and then an interesting uh, Grenoble Red there that's a bit unusual. Nothing like the uh, other varieties, or the others, obviously just from the same seed packet. So, yeah, very interesting. And I just popped in a few of these little red lettuces. I think these are Bijou. Um, and then got spinach down here. It's all coming on very nicely. And then here, just temporarily, I've just moved these uh, ochre from the outside just to keep them frost free 
as long as possible because Ocker puts on a lot of root growth, a tuber growth rather, in the last few weeks of its life. So the longer you can keep it alive, uh, the better. And all of the kind of energy and all of the um, juices and moisture, whatever that's in these stalks, very watery stalks, gets pumped down into those tubers, um, as I said, in the last few weeks. So I don't know what they're looking like. I'll just move it around in here a little bit. Oh, that's what we like to see. That looks like kind of perfect ochre tuber there. Really good, good size. So if I get lots like that, I'll be really happy. Um, ochre's a really nice, crispy, um, salad veg it's a little bit like a radish um yeah I, I really like it in salads but obviously you can cook with it as well um so that i think pretty much is the polytor one more rocker plant outside here and i've just kind of put it in this really sheltered little nook um and it, we had a quite a frost last night actually and it looks like it survived so that's pretty good but it just suit that one that plant's too sprawling, I couldn't fit it easily into the polytunnel. So let's take a look at the plot in all of its winter ugliness. And we'll have a quick look round. So some lovely lambs that is here. It's really coming on beautiful. And got some uh, spring cabbage. And basically, as I clear beds, I'm just starting to plant um, spring brassicas, um, especially the spring cabbage, popping that in. Um, and then later on next year, so early on next year, sort of February time, I'll start planting some of the other early stuff, like calabrese and the like. So it's a lovely marvel of winter starting to form hearts so uh, I'm pretty pleased with that it's a really nice hardy winter lettuce if you can keep it in good condition it's one of my favorite beds at the moment really beautiful mix of these spring onions which are not far off being ready and at this end We've got uh, freckles, and um, we've got Roxy. Uh, I'll just make two more lovely beds of Grenoble Red in this cold frame. Some nice little red cabbages. I always like to pop a red cabbage in when I've got a little bit of spare space because it's definitely one of our favourites. And these are Calabrese. Obviously, we've harvested the heads but we are hoping to get some side shoots off them there are some starting to form so uh, we'll give it a go we're not desperate for the bed so might as well leave a them. lovely bed of uh, watermelon winter radish and the leaves are great um, never have that much success with the actual radishes <laughs> i don't know exactly why maybe i plant them a bit too late but uh, I actually plant them mainly for the leaves because they're a really good uh, brassica leaf, nice and tender for smoothie mixes. And then in here, we've got loads and loads of spring onions in here uh, and just a few winter densities. And this is another first for me because it just looks like a bed of soil, but actually it's a bed of carrots. Um, there's pretty good germination so far. I'm pretty pleased with it. And so I'm hoping that I will get some carrots in April, early May, from this bed. And it's always touch and go with carrots because, you know, you either get these lovely, gorgeous, sweet, early carrots, or they just all go to seed. A nice bed of chard. I've just planted a bit more forward hook chard in here. And some more chard here. It doesn't need to be underneath this net, but um, I just had to put the net somewhere, so 
that's where it went. And the little greenhouse is full of overwintered brassicas. These are sprouts on the top and then cabbages along the bottom and looking pretty good aren't they? So hoping for some lovely early veg there and some lovely coal rabbi and some more Grenoble red and then you can see the size of these leaves are really really tender these are some of the ones I'm picking for the wedding. Nice little bed of mixed brassicas. These aren't the main brassicas, they're over on Jenny's plot, but uh, they're still useful to have and there's some really massive um, kales, which are in a right old state at the moment, I'll show you. So white fly problems and sooty moulds and things like that, but I'm going to give these, all these plants a really good um, cut back, get rid of a lot of this old rotten foliage. Uh, and let them grow on for spring because as I say I don't really need brassicas at this time of year How well I do but I've got others um, these plants are for spring and I've got sprouts in here little ones come in I've got lots of mature ones elsewhere so uh, yeah it's pretty good and then this is the radish bed that I've just planted these are growing on quite nicely, quite pleased with those. And then this is a red ruble, this is a salad kale, but we use it for everything. So you can use it just like spinach, um, you know, it's good in smoothies, and the younger leaves are nice in salads. A nice bed of red kiss and spinach, it's coming on pretty well. We might actually get a crop off this this year, but really it's intended for um, spring. We'll probably actually start cropping it late February if uh, last year was anything to go by. And then this is the main early onion bed. And we've got a stir on in here which can be used as spring onions or left uh, to grow on as an early main crop. And then there we've got um, a couple of different overwintered onions, uh, tough ball um, and stir on and we've got a few others as well, smaller beds but um, yeah I'm quite hopeful these are growing quite strongly now these so uh, quite pleased with those. I should say we don't really grow a lot of um, onions over winter because we find that uh, they take up a lot of space for a long time and you only get them a few weeks earlier than your main crop onions planted in February. So, you know, you could, and we do, get a lot of food out of the beds from October through to February. Uh, and so it's kind of a bit of a waste to put too many in. Um, so this is about all we'll need really uh, to get us through uh, that period from probably you know, late May through to uh, early July. Uh, most of our beetroot are in store now, but we just leave a few, um, um, especially like little beds like this one. Uh, and then we just pick these uh, fresh uh, up until, um, well, probably about the end of the year. Uh, and then we switch on to the stuff that's in store. And we've got two radicchio beds. They've got uh, quite a lot of growing still to go, although um, they do start to rot if you leave them too long. So I might have to start uh, harvesting some of the bigger ones fairly soon. In fact, I might pick the biggest one today. So another bed of lettuces. This one's Navarra, it's one of my favourites, but uh, not really at this time of year. Um, so we've been enjoying this uh, well, we will enjoy it all the way through autumn, but come winter, really, it doesn't really grow very fast. And the leaf quality isn't that great, but then if you can keep them alive, then they're amazing in early spring. So uh, it's definitely worth a try. Uh, we've got more spring onions and more Grenoble reds. You can kind of tell Grenoble red is my favorite. And then I've just planted this bed of uh, beetroot to overwinter. And the uh, little seedlings looking really healthy. So I'm really pleased with those. 
They're quite leggy little plants when I put them in, but planted them quite deep. They look lovely now. And then we've got a bit of a straggly bed of spinach. Again, that's late February, March time. Just won't believe the difference. Overwintering spinach is definitely worthwhile because you get such strong plants uh, so early in the season. And then we're almost done. Lovely bed of strawberries. These are ever-bearing strawberry. You don't cut them back. You just take some of the dead leaves off later on. And then this is the last bed really on my plot. This is, these are field beans. And as I'm always telling people, you harvest these by pinching the tips out. You just pinch that out like that. You can take that leaf. Just harvest that. And that's a nice spinach substitute. And as you can see, I've got a reasonable crop of that on my plot. You're really growing this for um, what's going on under the soil. So deep down in there, there's little, well, trillions of bacteria forming little nodules full of nitrogen on the roots. And so long as you don't let these field beans um, actually grow beans, then those nodules will be full of nitrogen when you harvest the tops leave the roots in and this will be next year's brassica bed. I've got some late sprouts, not doing too badly. And some lovely kales, got a bit tappled up there. And these are Romanesco cauliflowers, starting to come on quite nicely. Probably harvesting those for Christmas. More kales, a few beetroot, carrots in here, still protecting those. And then spring cabbages all the way down here. And that's me done. There they go, that's the overview of my plot. And I think I'll do separate videos actually for. Uh, the, uh, for Debbie's plot and Jenny's plot and the back garden. My, oh, my um, new IBCs are now full of water. We've had so much rain. I can hardly believe it really. We've had enough rain to keep everything watered even though it's all under cover. Um, and to fill these IBC tanks. It's just been crazy. So here's the start of our mini harvest. We've got absolutely gorgeous sprout top and if you've never tried sprout tops they're just the most fantastic brassica leaf some lovely sprouts giant ones and little ones colettes my absolute favorite apart from sprout tops of the brassica family absolutely lovely um calabrese side shoots looking good some really nice kale, Carvalho Nero and curly kale. Some lovely golden beetroot. Oh, quite a nice selection of carrots. A little um, radicchio head, just to provide a bit of colour to the salad mix. And a lovely tender little red cabbage as well for uh, cooking and Half of it can go in the salad mix as well. Gorgeous chard and field bean tops, just like broad bean tops. So now I'm starting to make up the salad mixes. I need 10 of these in total. So that's the first one of Navarre. And two of Roxy. And then two of Freckles. And then we've got one Marvel of Winter for anybody who wants a lettuce that looks like it came from the supermarket and some lovely red bijou and then we've got four containers of grenoble red and we've got salad sprinkles some lovely french breakfast radish and some baby carrots and some salad rocket 
and then back home I've got a few cucumbers um, and then obviously unfortunately we've got to buy tomatoes because we've got no more tomatoes left um, but then that's pretty much it so I hope you like this little video and I'll see you soon <laughs>